Abbas, what about the flask now? Be fast. I'm getting late. We still have time, ma'am. And the flight is still two hours time. Shut up! What about the hold-ups on the way to the airport? I know a shortcut to the airport. Okay, just go. Abbas, Abbas, wait, please. Just wait for me. so that you miss your flight. But I expected you to come out and bid me goodbye. At least wave or smile at me as I go. But I didn't see you. Because I can't pretend as if I'm happy with the journey when actually I'm not. Here we go again, on the same issue, repeating the same thing over and over again. Honey, these are the open doors we have prayed and fasted for. Hey, aren't you happy about this ministerial progress? I'm not against your ministerial progress. Honey, how you know that? You hardly stay at home these days. Do you realize you'll be abandoning me most of the time? But that's not true. I came back from my last trip last week, and since then we have been at home together. But since you came back from your last trip last week, you've not been having time for me now. You are going on another trip to Kenya. I don't even know when you are coming back again. Ah, honey. But I told you about this trip. i show you my itinerary. One week at uh, Nairobi Pentecostal Church, and another week at the uh, African uh, Women Congress or Refugee Mission at Mombasa. Just two weeks in Kenya, and three days at Cameroon Fire Conference. That's all. Eh? Another three weeks away from home? Honey. Is that not too much? Eh? Honey, this is the work of God. These are the hope on those we have prayed and fasted for. See, the church is getting larger, and the faith ministry is growing. The Lord is enlarging our coast. But what about me? What about our home? Okay, when I come back from this trip, because I'm even getting late already, when I come back, we'll discuss about that, okay? Rachel, 
Have you eaten? And Jada said your food is ready. Oh. Tell her I don't feel like eating anything tonight. Let her prepare a cup of tea for me. And you bring it. Yes, Dad. This evening, that you should prepare tea for him and I should bring it to him. Is that the first thing? Did he even eat in the afternoon? Daddy doesn't seem that good. Not sure. makes me feel lonely most of the times. Even while I travel on ministration, she will not go with me because she's so busy with her own itinerary too. Honey, it will be possible for me to travel with you on this journey. I've already given those people my word that I will be at their convention. They have sent me their handbills and my picture is already there. I only have today and tomorrow to prepare the message. So please try and understand. I understand. But how do you want me to feel? The, the people in Port Harcourt are expecting both of us. Other ministers, they are coming with their wives. They've even booked a hotel suit for us. How do you want me to cope with that when I get there? To me personally, I believe this is a great sign of promotion for both of us. Just see, our church at home is growing and flourishing with committed pastors and elders, deacons, and our faith ministry is growing as well. And you see, invitation coming here and there. I believe this is a great sign of promotion. Honey. I know, I know. Please, I want you to go with me. I feel proud among other ministers. Who down will take care of the children? Eh? Please. But what will happen to the invitation to the women convention of Hadonai missions? Will it be all right for me to disappoint these people? Eh? Try to understand <sighs> now. Many a times, when I'll have come back from my long ministration days, only to find out that issue has gone on a long days of ministration. Abbas! Yes, sir. Yes. Take the yams and the plantains and put them in the kitchen. Okay. And tell Rhoda to take all the potatoes inside the kitchen. Okay, sir. What do you bring for us? A lot of
Honey, I'm back home. Dad, Mom has traveled this morning. Traveled? Yes. To where? She said she had an engagement in Benin City. But we spoke on the phone yesterday. And she didn't tell me she'll be having any trip. Okay. Go and get me some water, please. Rhoda! Welcome, sir. Is it true that mommy has traveled? Yes, sir. She, but she said she will call you from Benin. You can go. Thank you, sir. Dad, what do you bring for me? Honey? Hello. How was your trip to Benin City? It was pleasant. I've just been checked into a hotel. The program begins tomorrow morning. I miss you. But we spoke yesterday. You never told me you'd be traveling today. I never did. But I, I show you my itinerary for the third quarter of the year. So I thought you knew. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just arrived from my trip. With hope that I'll meet you at home, but I didn't. I'm sorry. Hmm? Be praying for me so that God can be glorified in the program. When are you coming back? It's just a four day program. But when I arrived at Beni, I met um, a group of women from Jubilee Christian Center, Sapley District, who had been delegated to convince me to spend two nights in their ongoing program. It's a convention, you know. So I have to spend two days with them before coming home after Benin's program. But by next week, I, wish I should be at home. Next week? That's too long. Come on. I will soon be at home, hmm? All right, all right, all right. Bye. Bye. Love you. <laughs> When we are together at home, she doesn't have time for me. You see that she's writing a message for an invitation, fasting and praying for an outreach, or busy writing a next book. Come to bed. It's almost midnight. I want to finish writing this book before next weekend. I want it published before our coming convention. You've been on this writing since last week. Want to give yourself some rest? Huh? Honey, I will come. Give me some time. You want to launch it at our next convention? <laughs> Honey, please. I'm busy now. I'm trying to concentrate. Sorry.
So you are praying? Yes, I'm praying. Sorry. She wasn't like that before. She was timid, caring, and a husband of a woman. She was extremely shy. She gave me her total self. And she knew nothing beyond the church activities and the home duties. I brought her out of her shell. She was shy. Yet I knew that God had deposited some virtues in her. She had desires and vision to be used by God like a cool and Gloria Cooper. I kept on praying and encouraging her to stay up her spirit and be what the Lord had wanted her to be. This continued for her first six years in marriage till one Sunday evening. We had invited a woman evangelist from Zambia to our Hanwa Women Convention. She ministered under an open heaven, full of anointing and power. The whole church was electrified with the presence of the Lord and His glory. Honey, I noticed you were quiet throughout the message of the woman. Even when she was going about greeting the elders and the deacons after the service, she came to you. She even hugged you. But your response was so cold. Even when we were coming home from the car, you kept on wiping tears off your face. Honey? Honey? What's the matter now? Actually, I know why she was crying. She had been jolted in her spirit, having seen how God could use a woman who has released herself for the Holy Spirit. She was challenged, and she evaluated herself. She realized she had not been what the Lord wanted her to be as a mother in Israel. She was so contented being called a pastor's wife. But I had wanted more than that from her. I had wanted her to be a great woman that evening. She seems to realize what I've been telling her. Me. What's the matter now? <laughs> Nothing. I just want God to use me.
Who is there? David. What is it? She has come. Who? The man I preached in the church this evening. The man from Zambia. But I've told Dickin Lambert and the protocol officer to take her to our hotel room. Dickin Lambert brought her here. Ah. Okay, tell her we are coming. Okay. Honey, let's go up there. You will you go first. Reverend Mrs. You've come to greet my family. You're welcome. Thanks for blessing us today, ma. <laughs> Thank you so much. Actually, sir, um, we've already uh, taken her back to our hotel room. But um, she said she needed to visit your family this evening. That was why we brought her here. Is that so? Pastor, during the service this evening, the Lord gave me a message for you and your family. But I need to see you both in private, sir. Uh, maybe we'll have to excuse you. We'll, we'll be waiting outside. Pastor, Mrs. Yes, ma'am. The Lord told me to come and pray for you. He gave me a message for you and told me to come and pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thus says the Lord, Pastor Mrs. I have created you to show forth my glory. I have hidden virtues in you. I have visions in you which are lying dormant. You shall be an excellent weapon in my hands to bless the daughters of Zion. Amen. You shall be a model to them and a mother in Israel to many of my daughters. I will grant you the desires of your hearts and use you for my glory. Amen. But, you must follow your husband. You must build your home. Let your light shine forth from your home to the field. An excellent wife is a crown to her husband. So, when God has promoted you, do not cross your boundary. It is well with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ma. I'm grateful. That night, the sleeping giant in my wife woke up. She was transformed by the Spirit of the Lord through those prophetic utterances. My church members began to notice a different woman entirely. I was timid, shy, and a wavering person. Began to be bold, valiant, and goal getter. The youth and the women in my church began to get inspiration and encouragement through our fairy messages. Two years ago, we commissioned a ministry daughter of Zion. She began to receive invitation from other churches and ministries. Between last year and now, she has traveled outside this country almost 11 times. She has just launched her 19th book. She has been so busy while 
I'll be so lonely. Father, I bring the case of my wife to you. I don't know what to do again, Lord. I know you've given her a great vision. She's full of zeal for your work, Father. But I'm hot inside, lonely and neglected. No, I came with him. That's my boss, the priest who commissioned me many years ago. It's good to see you, sir. That was a good message this evening. You were in the church, sir? Yes, I was in the church, and you preached very well. We thank God, sir. Mm, you started with praises to your husband with many beautiful qualifying adjectives, mm -hmm. and that without him, without his permission, you wouldn't have been able to honor their invitation. After which you, you preached powerfully on an ideal woman. <laughs> you really follow the message, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But unfortunately, you said so many things in that message that were not correct. Like, like what, sir? So many things. You preached about the submission of Sarah, about the obedience of Esther, and Deborah's resistance following of Barak to the victorious war of Sisera. Are those words, are, are they wrong, sir? No. Reverend Mrs. They are not. But what you said in the message that was wrong was that that is the pattern of your life. You said that was the way you were able to win the heart of your husband. Reverend Mrs., you steered the spirit of those women this evening to honor and love their husband, to submit and give their body and all to their husbands as a divine requirement of an ideal virtuous woman. And you knew it, that you were guilty of all those things you were saying. In all your beautiful and inspiring teachings this evening, you did not tell them of your flagrant disobedience and arrogance to your husband. You forgot to tell them that you no longer submit to your husband because of the sudden open doors of opportunities and privileges 
to minister in many places. You preached so well this evening, Reverend Mrs. You support the women to support their husbands. Even though you did not remember to tell them that on several occasions, you had stood against the visions and programs of your husband because it ran contrary to your own schedules and itinerary. Ha! Many visions he hoped to have fulfilled had eventually been abandoned just because you refused to agree with them. God. On me? Eh? Why are you misunderstanding me? All I've said is simple and wise. Eh? You've been preaching on radio for several years. This idea of television is too costly for now. Eh? Let us choose the money to establish that nursery school we've been talking about. No! <coughs> you know of several testimony coming from that radio program, don't you? And you know of several requests and telephone calls of people clamoring for this same program on the telly. What I'm saying is very simple, honey. Let's use this money for the television program and that of nursery school can wait. I know. But we've been postponing this vision of establishing a nursery school for the, for, for the past two years now. You know that. He makes all things beautiful in his own time. All right. <sighs> and he has since put the vision away. He hasn't mentioned it for a long time. Yes. He had always turned that to your own way. In order to avoid conflict in the ministry and to allow peace in the home. So, do you see how guilty you have been? God. I was only thinking of doing the work of God. I wanted this purpose to be fulfilled in my life. Oh God, you know. I wanted to serve you with all my life. Yes. But in the process, you are breaking spiritual laws by not being obedient and submissive to your husband. Ah, oh, God. You have allowed the devil to corrupt the zeal and the gift with pride and arrogance to your husband. I love my husband. I always testify to his love and kindness to me. I always praise him before people. I always tell people how much he loves me. And how much he cares for me. I cherish him. I adore him. I love him. You love him outside the home. You praise him before the people and the congregation. But you really show him the love at home. You never had time for him. I, I didn't know. I just oh God, you know. You are trying to run ahead of your husband, isn't it? Your husband is dying inside because you have exposed him to emotional and psychological torment. You have denied him all your love and care. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me. Oh, God. I'm sorry, Lord. And so, the judgment is this. Which judgment? Who are you? 
since your husband is presently emotionally disturbed, though he always appears happy before his congregation. Please, who are you? The enemy has begun to plan to catch in on this loophole created by you. He has begun to manipulate, to strike at your husband and cause a major setback and scandal in his ministry. But the Lord God will not allow this. Therefore, in order to preserve his life and ministry, the Lord is relieving him of this agony by taking him home. <laughs> You stepped out of your covenant boundary. I sent her to go and pray for you and tell you about the covenant. But I always try to keep the covenants. But you always break it. Then please, don't take my husband home. Please. Please don't take my husband home, please. They just came down now. Did you see them? But, madam, this is just 2.30 a.m. in the morning. You can't have visitor in the night. I didn't see anyone. Mm -hmm. My God, this is 
too much for me. Where's Felicia? My son, my son. Don't worry, that will come as friends. Daddy! I got your phone call this morning. Is that what you said? Reverend Mrs. You arrived yesterday morning. And you have just spent an evening with us. In fact, people could not yet get over your message of yesterday night. And they are all expecting you again this evening. You know you are the main speaker for the convention. You still have four more nights to spend with us. Why did you suddenly decide to leave us this morning? Moreover, the organizers of the African Women Congress on Refugee, Refugees Mission just called yesterday evening to confirm if you have arrived here. Because they are expecting you in Mombasa as from Sunday evening. No, no, Reverend Mrs. Please, please, what's the matter? I could see you already dressed up for the trip determined to go back home. Sir, I'm very sorry for all the inconveniences. I just have to go back home immediately. The Lord wants me to go back home as quickly as I can. Please, I'm very sorry. All right, Reverend Mrs. Felicia, all right. Um, we understand. We believe there must be a strong reason why the Lord wants you to go back home. Don't worry. We will escort you back to the airport. But are we really sure, sir, that uh, there is a flight going back to Nigeria this morning? I have just called in Kenya Airways, but they said they are going in the evening. But I've also called Ghana Airways. They said there's a flight from South Africa around 12 p.m. So I have to go there right now to make all necessary booking. <sighs> all right, then. Let's, let's pray with you.
Hi, Palama. How are you? Bye, Oni. Elbow, I see that queen, please. How are you? Where is daddy? Where is everybody? Mommy! Eh? Am I the kids I see low? Why? Daddy! At the at the Shelly! Want the girl of the letter now? Hey! My God! <laughs> I said I was sorry! <laughs> Oh God! Boni be, hospital won't come on. Come on, 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 come Please enter. Where, where exactly are we going? Pass me to. Just enter. Go. All right. Ah. All right. Still in coma. Hmm. You see, hitting his forehead dangerously against the stool must have caused some serious damage to his brain. Hey. Don't worry. Just keep on going. Just keep on going. Madam, where exactly are we going now? We've been to three different hospitals. I don't know. I don't know. Ali said my husband and my daughter have been rushed to the hospital since yesterday. I know. I know. Where exactly? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. I said I was sorry. Help me now. Won't you help me? <laughs> help me, Lord! <laughs> Husband. What happened to Rachel? Thank God you are back now. Talk! She was convulsing. Convulsing? And, and at the same time, Eddie fell down. It is too. Since then, he has been in coma. He couldn't talk or hear. He is just unconscious. And my daughter too? The doctor says she has calmed down. Oh Please take me to where my husband is. Okay. 
Excuse me, madam. You can't stay here because the doctor said nobody should stay here. This man is in a state of coma. Please help me tell the doctor that I need to be here for a while. Mm -mm. No. I don't want you to disturb him, please. Honey, I'm back. I'm back, honey. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry for all the pains I've caused you. You see, your pains and agony and your groanings were so strong that Jesus himself had to come into my hotel rooms in Kenya to pronounce me guilty. Oh God. Honey, I, I never knew I was hurting you. You always say that you are not happy. But I didn't know what had gone wrong with me. Honey, please. Inside the plane, throughout my six hours flight, I was praying. I was dedicating my, my, my life to love you more. I beg God, I, I, I have, I have even begged God to, to have mercy on me. I pleaded that I don't want you to die. I begged him to tear the handwriting of the devil. Come, come on, honey. Please don't die. Please. Oh, wake up. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> honey, this is my itinerary for this year. Till next year, June. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Open your eyes. Open your eyes and check through it. Come on, honey. You can cancel whichever one is not convenient for you. Hmm? <sighs> honey, honey, I promise to love you with all my life. Okay? I will love you with all my life. I commit myself. Honey, honey, God. Honey, I commit myself to your visions and ministry. As for, as for, all my invitations will pass through you, okay? Come on. I'm sorry, honey, please. Honey, I'm sorry. I, I promise to take care of you. I will take care of you with all my life. Please. Come on, open your eyes, open your eyes very well. Yeah, it's me. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen, honey. Thank you, Jesus. I bless the Lord. I'm back. I Felicia. God. Yes, yes, Felicia. Felicia is back from Kenya. Honey, I'm sorry. Rachel. Rachel, she has come down. She's now okay. Honey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all that I've done against you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. What? Thank you for giving me. What nonsense is this? Jesus, I thank you. I... 
my husband will live to fulfill your purpose in the name of Jesus. Lord, we shall all live to fulfill your purpose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. This is amazing. Pastor. Madam, congratulations. Thank you very much. This is nothing but God's work. <laughs>